Well, welcome back. Sermon Prep, Week 3. Dr. G here. I'm glad that you're there and really grateful for all your hard work so far. Good job on discussion boards and the other uh, materials and content and reading that we're doing so far in the class. Keep up the good work. Uh, it will pay dividends. Um, this is our beginning video, that is to say, the video that we share together to pray and to ask for God's help, but also to ponder a thought or two philosophically about what we're doing and how we're doing it as uh, messengers, communicators of God's word, sermonizers, preachers, whatever words you want to use uh, in this business of preparing our message in the forms even that we'll look at this week and next, specifically informally, uh, for doing so. So before we jump into some thoughts, let's pray and uh, just commit our time to the Lord. So uh, bowing your heads with me, Lord, thank you for my friends. I just pray for your grace, your strength, your perseverance, your energy for them as they put their uh, uh, talents and focus and lives to work this week, this third week into our class in all the dimensions that they're um, invited and and engaging in in this season in their lives. Lord, the different classes, the various jobs and roles and family and ministry uh, responsibilities, just in all the ways that um, life encounters them. I just pray that you would meet, be with, and energize them for the challenges of the week and of the day. Lord, as we focus on content this week and form and the various kinds of sermons that can be uh, prepared around specific frameworks. We ask for your wisdom and your strength and your insight and your revelation to flow that we might be the most effective communicators possible in the roles and uh, charges that you've given us in your kingdom in our callings. Lord, thank you for the privilege of serving you and being together. We're grateful for the time and commit it to you afresh as an act of worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good. So what I want to share with you, just a thought or two about a really important uh, maxim that sounds like a bumper sticker and has been said probably a thousand times, but is really true. And that is as a communicator in general, but specifically in ministry of God's word via his uh, empowering spirit, that is to say as a sermonizer or preacher or a Bible study or a small group leader or whatever role or roles that you're engaged in in the communication dimension, that you and I are our message in a very real way, right? That, again, sounds like a, a bumper sticker, but it's really quite profound to think carefully about the reality that it's only out of our living experience as human beings engaged in an active and lively, hopefully, passionate relationship with Jesus Christ, that his message finds the fullness of its expression in so many different ways. We are our message is not just a matter of uh, thinking in terms of authenticity and integrity and, and so on, which are an important set of qualities uh, to consider, but really involves what I want to suggest are, are three major component parts. The first being context. The second being integrity, as I just mentioned, in a lot of different ways. And the third being adjacency. By these terms, I mean first context. What, what kind of messenger are you at this point in your life you need to be thinking carefully about? Um, and chances are, for all of us, we are different kinds of messengers at different points, right? Some of us are younger, some, like me, quite older. <laughs> Uh, some experience, some not so experienced, some just beginning, some just ending. Um, there are ministries and their roles and callings in the kingdom, but at whatever point you're at, you need to think carefully about the relationship between who you are and where you're at with your own walk in uh, and with the Lord and the context in which you're ministering, because I want to suggest to you that there is probably a lot more direct relationship between uh, the context that you're being called to minister in right now, whether it's a local church, large or small, again, Bible studies or small groups, a parachurch ministry, maybe uh, you know some kind of uh, work environment where you're not a preacher per se, but you're 
communicating God's work regardless in less formalized senses, but perhaps utilizing different techniques that you're learned, you've learned or are learning in this class. Um, there's lots of maybe a million different ways that we become communicators in a context. But I want you to think carefully about who you are and where you're at with God relative to that. Because again, you may find that there's a whole lot more connection between where you're at personally with God and what you're going through and um, who you're ministering to in this particular season. The second thing I want to talk about is the fact that you know the quality of your relationship with God has a direct bearing on the quality of your message uh, on behalf of God concerning his word. That is to say, the maturity level, the, the sensitivity level particularly, the emp empathy and sympathetic level, the um, application of whatever uh, word or message you're feeling compelled to bring and how people receive and uh, walk out or incarnate that. And one of the things that I'm persuaded of is that we as Christian leaders are not so much people that teach others or communicate to others how to apply the Christian life as much as how to incarnate it, that is to say, how to live it. And so um, the integrity, and you don't have to be a perfect person, you don't have to be a sinless person, thank God, because none of us are, uh, you don't have to be uh, even a whole uh, or you know, in an exemplary way some magnificently healthy person. What you have to be is a person who's willing in every dimension of their life to continue to submit themselves to God and his leadership as you walk forward and be both an example and, and a mouthpiece for him. So I want you to think about um, integrity and then I want you to think about adjacency. Um, by that I mean the closeness of uh, the relationship between who you are right now and where you're ministering, the integrity of your own personal relationship with God, and then how that plays itself out, um, oftentimes in advance of your speaking engagements or commitments. Um, one example, and I could give you a thousand, I won't take the time, but one example is um, as a senior pastor and church planter, I learned at a whole new level that uh, more often than not, and not every preacher or lead pastor perceives this uh, or, or often talks about it, but it's true, there's this kind of eerie, spooky thing that happens where you walk through things, um, sometimes eight, eight months, a year, you know, sometimes longer, sometimes very uh, short period of time. You walk through things that your congregation is about to walk through. And you learn and you grow and the Lord leads you in specific ways that are directly applicable to the message you're going to bring six months or three months or even next week from now. When you're walking through that big or large issue of life, you know, sensitive to and following the lead of the Holy Spirit, hopefully, in your integrity, uh, as discussed a moment ago. Uh, I say that because um, it, it's helpful to know that the Lord is uh, incredibly faithful in leading you and caring for you as you lead and care for other people. And there's a deep and, uh, again, sometimes eerie sort of reality to that that, uh, if you're not aware of, um, is applicable. And, again, I use the example of a weekly commitment to a congregation as a senior pastor as one amongst many settings where that works out. You, you can be an itinerant preacher and have that dynamic take place. You can do the occasional Bible study and have that take place. But be aware that the adjacency of the people to whom you're and for whom you're ministering has a deep and connected relationship uh, to you and your walk with God and likewise vice versa you to them. Uh, and that too is a part of what it means to recognize that we are our message. So these are, you know, some of the things we could talk about them for hours, but just to provoke you to think carefully about who you are and what you're doing and how it's going for you and how you can make the most of being uh, the honored person that you are as a communicator of God's word to his people. Okay, Hope, hopefully that's helpful, thought-provoking, and we'll see you shortly online. Thanks.